this presentation, we will take a look at the multiple choice questions related to bonds, notes payable, and long-term liabilities. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. First question, the premium on bond payable account is A, a revenue account, B, a liability account, C, a contra liability account, a D, a contra asset account, or E, an equity account. So if we go through this again, process of elimination, the premium on bond payable account is. So first we might just want to get an idea of what, what a premium is. If we can think of the journal entry that creates the premium, that would be the easiest thing to do. It gives a, a sense of what the premium is. Uh, that happens when we issue the bond. So say if we issued a bond for, uh, we had a bond payable that we're going to issue. The, the payable is a thousand dollar bond. We're going to credit the bond. And then the question is, well, how do I get, we know we're going to get cash then when we issue the bond. So that would be the debit. Now that's very sloppy, but then we'd get cash. And the question is, if we get more than cash than the bond or less than the bond, well, what we what would result in a premium? If we got more cash than the bond, so 1,100, then we'd have to have a premium over here. And that means the premium must be a credit. So this would be the premium. So otherwise we'd have a discount. So a discount or a premium. You can kind of see that if you write out the original journal entry I'm not a little bit neater than this but if you write that out so that would be the premium so what is that premium well it's linked to the bond in some way it's linked to the bond and the bond is something we're gonna owe in the future it's a liability so just you would think the premium being linked to the bond would be some type of liability so if we go through this then we're gonna say well a says a revenue account that's not revenue a premium isn't revenue although you might think that because we got we got more money than the, the liability but we didn't really sell anything we're financing here so the premium is going to be allocated to expense so it's not revenue b says a liability account and then c says a contra liability so those are similar i would think uh, b and c would be the two that uh, stand out d says a contra asset account and there's nothing really about an asset that doesn't really make sense it would be an asset so and and e says an equity account and again it's not equity it's part of the liability it will be uh, expensed interest expense which is part of the income statement which is kind of part of equity but no so we're left with B and C so the premium on bonds payable account is either B a liability account or C a contra liability account now note that the C is kind of a subset of B in other words if something is a contra liability account it's also a liability it's just a specific type of liability account so if C is true, then B must also be true and they can't both be true. And on the other hand, uh, if B is true, it's a liability account. It doesn't necessarily mean that C is true because it could be a liability account, but not a special subset of contra liability. So just from logical terms, you would think that B would have to be the correct answer. Now, you can't really be totally sure on that because some test questions will say, well, if it was a contra liability, then that would be the more correct answer. It would be the more precise answer. So that type of logic won't work all the time, but that might be one indication that you can kind of look through and say, well, you know, this one has to, if this one is true, this one has to be true. And if this one is true, that one doesn't necessarily have to be true. Therefore, B has to be the true answer that's definitely true. Uh, but if we think through this, then why would they have a contra liability? Well, the premium is actually a credit. Notice what happens here is the bond payables on as a credit. The premium is also a credit, which is going the same way. It's not contra, it's not a debit. So why would contra liability be, a, be an option? Because a, a discount would be a contra liability because it would be a debit balance bringing down the bond premium and by being something contra debit as opposed to a credit. 
So it's not, it's not C because it's a premium and not a discount. And B is the correct answer. Final answer, the premium on bonds payable account is B, a liability account. Next question. Bonds that have an option to retire them before maturity are A. Normal bonds B. Serial bonds C. Sinking fund bonds D. High value bonds or E. Callable bonds Let's Go through this again using the process of elimination. Bonds that have an option to retire them before maturity are A. Normal bonds now that doesn't, there's probably such a thing as a normal bond, but it's not a term we usually use. So it's not something that should sound really familiar as something we're using, so it's not A. B says serial bonds, and that's something we have been think, talking about, so we'll keep that for now. C says sinking fund bonds, and it's not, that's not something we've spent a whole lot of time on. It doesn't sound, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say it's not C, I don't think. D says high value bonds, and again, that doesn't like ring a bell. It's something we spent a lot of time talking about. It sounds like a it sounds like a uh, investing term that we might hear, but it's not one of the bond types that we've looked at. So it's not that one. And then E says callable bonds, and that is one that we've a term that sounds familiar. So we're left with B and E serial bonds and callable bonds. If we go through this again, bonds that have an option to retire them before maturity are either B serial bonds or E callable bonds. In other two, it's going to be E here. Callable means we can call them before maturity time. Serial means it's going to have multiple different maturity dates. So it's going to be E here. So once again, bonds that have an option to retire them before maturity are callable bonds. Next question. A bond sold at 101 means a. Uh, bonds pay 1% interest. B. Bond sold at 101% of its par value. C. A market rate of interest is 1%. D. 101 bonds were sold. E. The market rate of interest is 101% of the contract rate. So let's go through this again. A bond sold at 101 means either A. The bond pays interest at 1%. That might sound kind of reasonable. We'll keep that for now. B says the bond sold at 101% of par value. That sounds kind of reasonable. Let's keep that for now. C says the market rate of interest is 1%. Uh, no, again, A and C are kind of related here. I'll keep that for now. D says 101 bonds were sold. So it says a bond was sold. So I'm not going to say it doesn't seem like multiple bonds wouldn't make sense because it says a bond and then D says the market rate of interest is 101 percent above the contract rate that seems pretty high that doesn't that doesn't seem right it seems like a way above the contract rate. okay so I don't think it's gonna be so we're left with a B and C so a bond sold at 101 means uh, the bond pays interest at pays 1 percent interest a B Bond sold at 101% of the par value, or C, market rate of interest is 1%. So, of those three, like A and C sounds pretty similar, except for mar we're talking about the bond pays interest, I guess the contract rate versus the market rate. And normally, that, those two, if I had no idea what this question was, I might start to narrow down on those two because they sound very similar, except for that one term. And this is actually a point where that's not the case. This is this is a a time where although a lot of times when we see something that looks very similar in wording except for one change meaning market rate versus contract rate oftentimes it's between those two in this case it's not so that's not the rule that will apply all the time but oftentimes when we see that trend we can say hmm if I have no other idea maybe it's that but we just have to kind of know here that the, the bond when we say it's sold at 101 percent at a 101 that just that's referring to the to the price we're selling it for. So if it's a thousand dollar bond, we're selling it at 1.01, 101 percent. So 110 is how we'd have to do that. And you just gotta have you just, the only way to know that is just to know that. So 101 just means it would mean 110 percent 
or I'm sorry, 101% of the face amount, 101% of the face amount. And if you move the decimal point over two places, that's 1.01. .01. So whatever the face amount is, the par value, you multiply it times the 1.01, .01, that's what it's actually selling for. That's gonna be the market price. That's what the market price is to sell the bond. So final answer, a bond sold at 101 means uh, B, bond sold at 101% of its par value.